Ring Rap Turtle, she I think it did her third test nest of the day again. I don't think she's laid anything again. She's already done, Emily. 15 minutes, she left. I don't think she did anything. That's eight days. Eight are they, days of testing. Are they fast? I've never had a Graptomy's nest for in my care. Are they fast yeah. nesters? Like um, terrapins? So it really depends. Like, I, and I, it, I don't know what you call fast or slow, but like my one Texas map laid today, she's probably spent a good hour and a half to two hours on her nest. Wow. She, she's, it's laborious, right? This yeah. ringed map turtle, if you remove her first ever nest, she's like a 30 to 35, 40 minute tops out of the water, back into the water. She is like wow. lickety split. So, but her first ever one, she took a while to just like, uh, she took a while to, you know, find where she wanted to lay. But once she found that spot, she reused that spot over and over and over again real quick. So new nesting box, uh, new habitat since last spring. So um, I know that's part of it. I'm just like, uh, uh, it's a lot of, like, it's eight days. I, I haven't seen, I haven't had a turtle do eight days worth of, ooh, let me dig a little bit. Nope, I don't like it. Or what, I don't know what it is she doesn't like. It's yeah, these are the wet. habitats it's, you've yeah. shared pictures of before, right? Right, yeah, yeah. Well, I approve the habitats, even if she doesn't, for what it's worth. Yeah, uh, I mean, the other turtles are, are doing fine with them. It's basically the same as her previous one, just it's not the previous one. So, who knows? But Do you think yeah. maybe it's, it's your attitude? or <laughs> Like, maybe you could just uh, be nicer, yeah. say nicer things? Yeah. You know, is the, is the spark works. is the spark gone? You know, she's not feeling it anymore. <laughs> so Steve, I have I have a real question for you versus Anthony's yeah. uh, nonsense one. No, I don't uh, think Anthony's nonsense one. <laughs> have you ever in the past, uh, and if so, how long are you waiting now before you do like preventative measures like using oxytocin to have uh, your map lay the eggs? Um, I've never had to use them before. And like this turtle, I've, this turtle has dropped eggs in the water before when she wasn't quite happy. Okay. So, um, I'm not really worried about her, like not dropping the eggs at some point. So, you know, we'll see. Um, I, I, I think she'll get to it. So, um, I purposely didn't water it down this morning, uh, cause I wanted to just let it let the surface dry a little bit because I think it might have gotten a little over wet, but it, it's hard to know for sure. Uh, so tomorrow morning, I'll wet it down again and, and see what she does. I'll, you know, I'll keep making some tweaks. It's possible it's just not quite right in the new box. So, you know, Rascal. different different variables, et cetera. So. Rascal. Right. Well, thank Always you. Yeah. I'm a map turtle aficionado now. I don't know if you knew that, Steve, but. They're great. Did, man. You, did you recently spend some time in some riverine areas, potentially? I may have. I may have. Mm -hmm. It's funny how stupid I, one idiot can be. But let me tell you, I've been, I've been very ignorant. And then you know, being able to see things from a different perspective in a different way. We'll get into it more. Obviously, uh, it just helps like connect the dots in your head. You know, like mm -hmm. anyway, I'll talk about it afterwards. But it's. There's a lot of things that we could all learn from just getting out there more and experiencing different things. Even though yeah. I'm not a field guy, I, I learned a lot in the last week. It's really awesome that just, you even have the yeah. opportunity to do that. It's not something mm -hmm. most people would have the opportunity to do. So accepting your ignorance, your, your pre-ignorance and uh, moving yeah. forward in a, in, a, in a light like that is pretty great. Yeah, yeah. there's so many yeah. things I don't know about America. <laughs> Speaking of which, something yeah, that's know. happening in America and in the South, Sam mentioned it's almost time for Turtle Fest. Sam, what's the date for Turtle Fest? If anyone here doesn't know. I can't remember. I, I, I think it's the 27th. 27th, yeah. 27th of April? Yeah. 2024 yeah. AD? Yeah, in a couple days, man. Sweet. I mean, yeah, it's it's coming quick. We're, it's we're coming quick. It's 12 days away. Mm -hmm. 12 so. days away. Yep. So, Is anyone here able to go? Not from us four, no. Yeah. No. no. I, I think Andrew was trying, going to possibly try to get down there. I'm not sure who else. Um, I know my my dear friend Chris Lekowitz is, is I think he's going to get over there. It's not far awesome. from him, actually, at all. It's like down the street, practically. Um, he was asking if anybody was going to, but um, wrong time of year for me, man. 
Yeah. And you know, when the, when the date came out for it, I already had two big trips planned, including the one that we're going to talk about tonight that was planned like 14 months prior or something. So right. there was no way I was making that. And next week I'm going to Denver for work. So there was no way that was happening. So. Yeah. Yeah, man. Denver's a great town. Yeah. Yeah. Anthony, you know people there? Do I know people? I know people at the Denver Zoo. I'm going for work, though. Got you. Okay. Yeah. I I have some close buddies there that I could have set you up with if you wanted like a nice dinner out or something. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. You're so sweet. Aw, shit. I've never been I've never been to Colorado before. That should be fun. Colorado's awesome. So if you, I normally if you don't time, announce when I'm traveling ahead of time. Like I didn't tell anyone I was going cross country. I mean, I told yeah. people, but I didn't like post on social media because I don't want my wife dealing with turtle poachers coming, showing up at my house in the middle of the night. Understandable. So I usually <laughs> let people know after I travel, but yeah. there's always somebody home. So just know that. Yeah. For and all cameras. of you who are. And yeah, and dogs. tons of cameras. Yeah, I've got 18 <laughs> cameras at this point to help prevent yeah. that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's awesome. Uh, Anthony, <laughs> if you if you find any free time while you're there, you really should get up into the Colorado Rockies. Uh, while this isn't great for like nature aspect, as far as the way nature should react, it will be one of the coolest experiences you've ever had, in my opinion. Uh, going up there, I sat there for 20 minutes. I had chipmunks literally in the pop, literally in the palm of my hands, like I'm holding chipmunks. What? Yeah, birds Disney are flying Princess? down, landing. Yeah, I, 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 I have photos I can show you. Uh, but birds landing in my hand. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. I don't they believe say, you. People told me that's like normal over there. <laughs> what kind of birds? So many, yeah, so many I humans out in the environment. You, so, yeah. It looked like a weird pigeon to me. I have no idea. A weird pigeon. But. <laughs> oh. Thanks for joining, everybody. Steve, let's yeah. do it. Hi, everyone. Let's do it. And then we'll, uh, one moment, we'll be back with uh, Tales of the Great American Turtle Chase. Welcome to the podcast, the destination for insightful discussions and interviews on the appreciation, conservation, and husbandry of reptiles with a focus on turtles and tortoises. Now, let's join our team of turtle nerds. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Emily, joined here with Steve, Kevin, and our guest, Anthony, again. (laughs) Hi, guys. I get to be a guest. Wow. We're so excited to talk to you tonight, bud. Yeah. I've got a lot of things to say that I need to get off my chest, so this is good. Mm. <laughs> All right, well, let's start with some of the fun ones. I want to jump right into it. Can you go ahead and tell everyone you what you did the last few weeks? Where have you been? Oh, I'm telling you, I'm still struggling with just being a fat, old, bald guy with no energy <laughs> as it is. Um, and then going into the, what I did um, over the last couple of weeks, the majority of the last couple of weeks was just insane. So we spent nine days um, on what we were originally calling the Turtle Cannonball Run, which if you're familiar with Cannonball Run, that's a, a movie. It's actually it's a real thing, but uh, on which a early 80s movie called Cannonball Run was based starring Burt Reynolds. You may have heard of him. And uh, we basically got across the country. We, we worked really hard in planning a trip where we would get across the country as quickly as possible to keep the pressure on the whole time with, with allowing just enough time to stop and smell the roses, so to speak. And by smelling the roses, I mean finding reptiles and amphibians. So we tried to make this as pressure filled as possible so that there was always this juxtaposition of you want to stop and slow down, find reptiles, but then you also need to keep your butts moving to make it to the next city. So if it's a little cold in an area or it rains or, or whatever's happening or somewhere is packed because of an eclipse or, you know, you've got wives that want to talk to you because there was an earthquake back home. uh, You have to keep moving and finding you have to keep moving and stopping to find at the same time things. So it was, it was, um, it was incredible. And cha- the biggest challenge of my life, I'm so tired still. I haven't recovered yet. 
um, from doing something that I don't do all the time. I'm not a field person. I get out in the field. I try to get out in the field and I enjoy being there, but I'm not someone who has a project like Steve and, and, you know, some of these other field biologists that like the turtle room has that actually spend a ton of time out in the, in the field. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was crazy. That's so awesome. how many days total were you gone for? Um, I mean, with travel on either end, because we had to fly to Florida and then fly back from, so we, we left from New York city, we had to fly to Florida and then fly back from Los Angeles. So the drive was along route 10, but we tried to avoid route 10 as much as possible. We didn't want to be on the main road because basically the entire country was road cruising. Um, you know, the possibility for road cruising. So even when we were, when we were driving, we were not just driving and um with the with the flights on either end and travel it was about nine days a little a little short of nine full days nine full days okay awesome. all right mm -hmm. we have i have some follow-up questions for that one but why don't you tell everyone who you were with too you didn't just go by yourself yeah well people are uh if people tune into the podcast and know some of the people that we've had on and things in the past then um you know we had kevin pollock on as a guest about I can't remember if it was last Jan. It was a January episode. I remember. I can't remember if it was last January, the one before. It might have been. It was the one before because I don't think I was on uh, on it. Oh yeah, because you've been on for over a year. Yeah. yeah. So so yeah. then we're talking like two plus years ago. We had him on in a January episode. Yeah. Um, Kevin wow, Pollock is the one. Goes. Isn't it crazy? He's the one yeah. who took my trip to China when Shannon wouldn't let me go. That my infamous uh, talking um, opportunity that got away. And uh, the other person was John, my best friend, who was who I started the podcast with about eleven years ago, or whatever that was. So we had him on too. We have had him on, yeah. yeah so if yeah. you watch the podcast a lot and tune in, then these are people who you know. So it's really interesting because Kevin is a professional field person who knows everything about everything. He knows plants. He knows all different types of herbs. He's the one who's telling us whether we should run and jump on a snake that we see that we can't identify. <laughs> uh and then john who basically like you know was a comedian in new york city and is a really soulful dude with interesting takes on everything but but other than that is just six foot nine gangly mess of a person who's just running around like a chicken with his head cut off just chasing after things and being athletic and uh, you know kind of the opposite of me in a lot of ways but in a <laughs> another tall person package i don't know so with two tall people in the car plus one normal person what kind of car did you have please tell me it was a tiny little sedan so we got a minivan and i'm so upset okay. that my didn't come up we got this minivan and we were in crazy weather in florida and almost got stuck several times so we had a, we, who has a rental car that has fifty thousand miles on it that was weird so the right. tires the tires were kind of old and we almost got stuck several times um, in Apalachicola, the national forest in the panhandle of Florida. Uh, and the van was covered in mud. And, and that mud was covering the van. This is how fast we moved across the country. The van was caked in that mud when we turned it in in Los Angeles. The mud from Florida. Wow. <laughs> we like drew with our fingers, you know, in the mud, you know, wash me. And I drew a turtle you room a logo. Of it, right? Oh, I have tons of pictures of that. Yeah. yeah I, saw it. <laughs> um, I drew, I drew a turtle room logo. And, and when we, when we turned it in, those drawings were as, as crisp as the moment that they were made. It was, it was crazy. I mean, that's how fast awesome. we made it across the country that we never even saw like a sprinkle because, mm -hmm. you know, it was only a few days. All right. Just a few um, more questions before we get to the turtle ones. Uh, how, who did most of the driving? Did you just share it or was it mostly one person? Uh, I would say John drove the most and Kevin drove the second most and I didn't drive at all. So when we, do you have to pay extra, you know, we followed the rules, which is so lame. Mm -hmm. You had to pay extra for extra drivers. So yeah. we paid extra to have a second driver. Mm -hmm. And um, I was waiting. I was the only one who checked a bag because I wanted people to have, I wanted to have space to bring things, equipment and stuff like that. So uh, I checked, I checked a bag and I was waiting at the carousel for my bag and they went to get the rental car, which was like right next to the baggage claim. It worked out so wonderfully that we were able to get right out of the airport in Jacksonville because everything was like in the same spot. So um, yeah, it was great. Okay. Awesome. Cool. So, uh, so uh, your route, how much of it was planned versus improvised? That's a great question. So I'd say it was probably about, well, most of it was planned. 
because we had to be so particular about where we were going and when, like we had a like scheduled like to the hour, not to the day, but to the hour about like, okay, we're going to have, we're going to finish here around 4 PM, 5 PM. And then we're going to have, we got five more hours of driving to get to the next spot before we get, you know, grab a hotel. And we were getting hotels like an hour before we were going to stop because we yeah. weren't sure exactly where we were going to land. You know, if we were in a place where we were having good luck or not finding a species that we thought we should find, you know, like, I mean, for the longest time, we, we couldn't see a red ear slider. We didn't see a red ear slider until Louisiana, which is crazy. Uh, and then we ended up seeing, I think, like 94. I counted every single reptile and amphibian that we found. It was something like 400 and something on the trip. Wow. But um, That's good. not different kinds, but 400 and something different actual a- individual animals that we saw, Dude, which is pretty great. Plus per day average. Yeah, yeah it's, it's great yeah. considering that we got like really skunked throughout the... Um, throughout the uh, um, West, throughout the desert. Once we hit West Texas, things kind of change. So, yeah. anyway. so let's not bury the leader real quick because the title here, the comments say that you were looking to find at least 13 turtles. Now, how many turtle, Correct. turtle species did you actually find throughout? Yeah, so we set over under, over unders based on what we thought we could do. So the goal for turtles was 13. Um, and I, I took the over on that. I thought we could definitely find 13 because, you know, even if there are places where you think you're going to find something, um, sometimes, sometimes you find ones that you weren't planning for, you know, a tortoise crosses the road or a box turtle crosses the road that you didn't know you were going to find, but, but that, you know, gives you a check mark or there's something common that pops up or, or there were some areas where we were going that had three or four species that could, that you could possibly find there. So, so I feel like it was going to be over and, um, and it was, we ended up with 27 different, tur- different turtles. Um, 200 plus percent to quota. Nice job. Yeah. Yeah. Not too bad. Not too bad. 25 different species, 27. Two of those were different subspecies. So 27 okay. different turtles total. Do you, Are you can you list them off? off the top of your head? Yeah. What is... <laughs> can I list them off the top of my head? Yeah. Yeah. Also state by state. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I would go, I would go chronologically and I'd probably miss yeah. one or two, but yeah, I could, I could probably list a lot of them. Do you want, do well, you let's really do want it. me to? Yeah. Try it. 25 could be done in three minutes. You got this. All right. Yeah. And you're being timed. Go for tortoise. Uh, go for tortoise. Sewanee River Cooter. Oh, I'd Sawan- like to pause for a second. Not only do I want the common name, I want you to get the scientific name as well. <laughs> oh. okay. um, Sewanee River Cooter, Sudemis Sewaneensis, the Sewanee Alligator Snapping Turtle, Macrochelys Sewaneensis, um, the, the Loggerhead Musk Turtle, Sternithorus Minor. What else did we get? Eastern mud turtle, which was interesting because we first thought, wait, wait, because this is the other thing. When you're traveling that fast Mm -hmm. and trying that intently to find different species, you don't realize like I just drove four hours and that species I was just looking for, we're out of the range for that now. So I could remember when it clicked in my head, oh crap, we didn't find a yellow belly slider. Like that, and that's it. Like now we're not going to find one because we're out of the range and it happens like that. But when we found the Eastern mud turtle, we originally thought it may have been a Florida mud turtle, the animal that we found, but come, you know, it's, it's an Eastern mud turtle. And we ended up finding another one, but it, it's just like, you know, the ranges sometimes can be so um, obviously organic. And um, as you're moving through the landscape kind of haphazardly, because we're trying to avoid those main roads so that we, you know, are more likely to find a snake crossing the road because we were going for all reptiles. The the focus was turtles, but we were going to count everything that we could. Um, You know, that, that was the really interesting piece that came out of that is, is like, wow, I don't know where the hell I am right now. And I mean, is this Mississippi? Is this Louisiana? What country am I in? I don't even know what's happening. And sometimes just listening to the people's accents around you can help like, Oh wait, that's not, uh, (laughs) That's that's not panhandle anymore. That's Cajun. Okay, got it. Was it a big culture shock for, for you, like being from the Northeast? Yeah, what was interesting is I've spent so much time in Florida, but I've never really spent time in the panhandle. I didn't realize how much more south the panhandle was than the, the central and southern parts of Florida. That was really? that was shocking to me. I mean, the panhandle is south. It is deep, 
American South. And, and I mean, I've heard people say that, but until I actually, you know, got to talk to the gentleman, you know, we were at the, um, the barber's map habitat and there was a gentleman there, a retired truck driver who was hanging out and he was just looking forward to, to chatting with somebody. So he started chatting us up and he was telling us about the, the father and son that drowned over yonder right before we were getting into the rushing river on a, in, in canoes. And I didn't even know John didn't say anything. He was probably trying to fake it till he made it, but John had never been on a canoe before. So um, that was interesting. And he's like paddling the wrong side. Like he wants to stop and he's like <laughs> on the wrong side. He kept going on the wrong side for anyway. So uh, we learned a lot and I was nervous too. I'm like, I'm going to sink these little boats out there. So um, that didn't happen luckily. But uh, it was it was definitely interesting. And anyway, he's telling us, you know, the the, the father son who who drowned over yonder. And you, I thought I was going to need Google Translate to figure out what the heck he was saying, because it, the accent was so thick. And I'm like, this is not the Florida that I've experienced. I've been to Florida forty times. I've never experienced this. So there you go. Panhandle is just South Alabama with more meth. <laughs> That's what it seemed like. Nice people though. Everyone was really nice. We were walking out of the um, hotel. And you've got uh, me and John, and, and I was saying before we went on, I'm, I'm six eight, and John is taller than I am. And we're walking out, and the woman says, "Where are y'all from?" And I said, "You know, we're from Connecticut and New York City." And she's like, "Oh, you y'all ain't related?" And I said, "No." Um, <laughs> and she said, "Wow, y'all so tall." She said, "That one, that one boy." Look like he ever bit a seven feet. And I said, oh my gosh. So that was one of the few, um, actually I should say several little <clears throat> South isms that came out of the trip where people were just saying, "We." so another story I have to jump to is we had this surreal moment where we came up to the Pearl River and there's this like beach um, where people can hang out and they've got music blasting, but there's nobody on the beach. It's completely empty and there's this like, blanket with music blasting and it's blasting like uh um what's that song i could feel it coming in the air tonight you know when mike tyson punches uh zach alfanakis in the hangover and it's playing and it's just this epic ballad and we come up and it's like 7 p.m right like it is so late we got there so much later than we hoped and there's two turtles basking on a log and we're like come on come on come on come on please be map turtles come on we gotta see this so we pull out the scope we pull out the good camera and sure enough, it's ringed map turtles. And we've got this amazing power ballad playing with an empty beach. There's <clears> literally <throat> not a person on the beach, but somebody left their stuff. So anyway, what we were feeling it. We're like, we're jumping up, high-fiving. We're like feeling the moment. It was incredible. We're thinking we're having the best luck ever on this trip. And um, so the guy ends up coming back and he's like, I don't know. He's probably like mid thirties, late thirties, early forties, something like that. But he's like a really fit guy, kind of guy who like shaves his chest and tans. So we started talking to him. Oh, there you go. Awesome. There you go. That's the, that's a picture of those Okalifera, the, the ring map turtles that were on that log. And um, so we started asking uh, him about the turtles. Like, you know what, do you, do you know what type of turtles there were? I, I don't remember why we started talking to him, but we asked him that question and he was like, "Oh yeah, you got, you got the snapper turtle, you got the soft shell turtle, and you got the redneck turtle, and that's all you got." And that was another one where it's like, "Oh my gosh, this Cajun guy! Why? First of all, he's drunk as hell. Didn't realize that at first. And I, I, people were just throwing these gems at us the entire time. That you, if if you weren't there, I'm sure you guys listening, it's just like that. People didn't say that. No, they did. She said he's air bit of seven feet." And then this guy's like, that's all you got. So then, of course, we're driving across the country and just repeating these lines the entire time because they were hilarious. Hey, Sorry, that was a really long winded way. Of... Go ahead. Let's say if you think they, if they were up here listening to you guys talk, you feel like they'd have uh, their own like isms they'd hold on to for the whole their trip. Yes. Yes. Because I say stupid stuff all the time. But yeah, I don't have an accent. They do. No, it's I get it. I get it. Yeah. But I, you know, uh, so, I should also, I feel like I should just say too quickly, you know, the idea for this trip, because this, I saw in the chat that Greg was here and he said, you know, I, I can't believe you did it, or it's awesome that you did it, something like that. And I just wanted to, to call out, you know, I, I'm on a group chat with, with Charlie and Greg and, and our friend Carl and, and Carl and, and Greg are, are very accomplished field 
guys with with a lot of experience out there in the wilderness doing what they do. And I was just trying to fake it till I made it on this trip. But the idea for this came from them. In that group chat, we were talking about Route 10. And I didn't even know what Route 10 was. I didn't know that was the 10 that people talk about when I'm out in LA. Um, I didn't know until they started talking about it. And then that's where, you know, Carl had mentioned Cannonball Run. And that's the race where you get across the country as fast as you can. Of, uh, and no, not Carl Franklin, uh, Carl May. But that whole idea happened because of that conversation. And I, I did ask if they'd be interested in doing it. And they said, well, maybe I'll come for a little bit of it and, you know, that sort of thing. But um, that was that was how that came that, that came about, the idea. About probably 16 months ago now. Maybe, maybe 14, but I think more towards 16 months ago. Okay, awesome. What was the, what was the dynamic like in the car with three middle-aged men just driving cross country? You know, no families. You guys are all have families. You guys all have kids. Uh, what was that like for nine days? Yeah. First, yeah. before Anthony answers this, I, I resent that you're implying that I'm also middle aged. Come on now. <laughs> Listen. So the average lifespan of the Homo sapien right now is around eighty. In the United States, it's even less. In the higher seventies. Uh, so with that said, you're probably pretty close to middle age, Steve. You're bordering one or two years there. <laughs> I know. I'm only thirty eight. So. I mean, you my, got, my life. Yeah, you were twenty five, though, buddy. Exactly, my life expectancy is fifty. <laughs> Let's be honest; we all know this. Yeah, yeah. Andre, uh, Anthony the Giant over here, you know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yeah. So the dynamic. All right, the back car, to Anthony. Interestingly, <laughs> you know, we're doing this road cruising thing, and not only had John never been on a canoe, but he'd never been road cruising, and he kept, he kept insisting that he should drive. He kept saying, "I'll drive, I'll drive," and you know, and then once he says, "I'll drive," what do you do? You know, like the first couple of days. You're not like, shut up, John, like, let me drive. So he did a lot of the driving. But what was so weird is he was like incapable of stopping the car quickly. So we would find, you know, a, a snake crossing the road and he would like slow to a stop. He couldn't stop quickly. And then on on the, the other side, Kevin, who was also driving, he slams on the, on the brakes and swerves. So everything in the car flies, you know, against the, the window in the side of the car. So... Um, the two of them were really on opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of their driving. Uh, both of them got pulled over at different points. Um, Kevin got pulled over in Kevin got pulled over in Texas, and John got pulled over in, in New Mexico. So I said both for speeding. Uh, both for speeding. Not bad though. Not bad. But uh, one Kevin was going fifty four in a forty, and John was going fifty in a forty. They're like this is so lame. They were just trying to stop. And it was on the highway. Georgia plates. Um, not really a high. May, you know, maybe it would have been like you know a route with a number, but sure. not really, not really highways. Maybe two lanes, probably one lane. But okay. they were they were forty hour, forty mile an hour zones. But that was pretty. That was pretty epic. It was pretty funny. I, and I was recording everything because I, I. So the goal, just so everyone knows was to do this and then have enough of a story that I could write a book about this like epic race against time across the country, really across the continent. Right. Um, and uh, so I was recording everything. So I had already been recording our conversation when the first cop pulled us over. So I, I have the the recording and I didn't even know I was, I didn't even remember I was doing it at first, but I recorded the whole thing. He's like, what are you, where, where are y'all headed? We're going to Comstock, Texas. Oh yeah, what's going on? In what's going on in Comstock? Uh, nothing, literally. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was funny. Yeah, we're just trying to sleep at the Comstock Motel, which is like a famous spot for herpers. So you mentioned the over under on turtles, among some other. Did you have an over under on speeding tickets? And did you? Have <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, you know, I counted weird things. So for a while, I was counting John's bowel movements because. <laughs> He would go to the bathroom like five times a day. He wasn't even sick. It was weird. It was odd. So I'm like, I need to document this. I stopped after a while though because he started getting secretive Number about his two, trips to the bathroom. Times? Yeah, yeah, it was weird. He's like, no, it's you know, I'm like a rabbit, like high 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 fiber diet and just you know taking a lot. Of, I don't I don't need to know any more of this. But I counted like That's how many how many ticks we had embedded in us. Um, how many? silly. Uh, John had zero. Kevin had one, and I had five. 
Oh, yeah, not bad. Not bad. Not as a lot bad more as service you. area, you know? Well, I had those five in like the first two days. So I was like, I need to start counting this because if I'm going to have 25 ticks embedded in me by the by the time I get across the country, I want to know. But yeah. Uh, yeah, desert didn't have any ticks for us. Mm-hmm. What else did you count? Uh, I mean, I, ticks. I counted. Um, uh, tickets. No, no tickets. Both were warnings. Oh, OK. I, yeah, yeah, it was great. great. It was great. Um, I counted, you know, how many crocodilians were we going to find? How many, <gasps> how many frogs, how many, um, how many salamanders and, and newts, how many snakes? So I don't know the number on a lot. I know what the over under was because mm-hmm. I have a list, but I didn't actually go through and see. Um, we, <clears throat> we found we're still working on the ID and a couple of things that we have photos of, or at least Kevin is I'm, I'm relying on Kevin Pollock for that. So we found at least 59 different reptiles and amphibians. The last one that we found being green sea turtles, uh, 411 animals, total animals that we saw, not animals, but you know, reptiles and amphibians. So yeah, the over under for turtle. And I told KP, I told Kevin, it's got to be 0.5 because you can, you don't want to have a push. So, but but these are all full numbers. But turtles was supposed to be 13. Snakes was seven, which we beat that for sure. Lizards was eight, which we which may have been about a push. We may have come into seven, seven or eight on that. Mm-hmm. Frogs and toads we had at 10. We definitely did not get 10 frogs and toads, which is crazy. Um, and then salamanders and and newts we had two and crocodilians we had one obviously because we weren't going to get far, far enough south to see american crocodiles so yeah. that was a push um salamanders i think we we got two we got a marbled and we got a slimy salamander That's so cool. yeah oh, it was nice. cool lots of stuff like that where that did was, you where did you see really a marbled cool. salamander down there the marbled salamander was in was right next to the barber eye habitat. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. The barber's map turtle habitat. And what was really cool about that um, is that that was really close to a spot with these um, with these Gulf Coast box turtles that are really, really unique. They don't look like panhandles. They don't look like tan phase. And they grow really big, like up to 10 oh, inches. Yeah, yeah. And the ones yeah. that we found were like eight inches, um, like patternless. They're like really dark like like almost a mahogany color but so dark that they look black they were interesting and um now so anthony yeah before you guys went and we uh we were talking about it it was it was said that uh those they thought maybe there was like a relation to putnami which are extinct uh having having you seen it what are your thoughts on that now well so so there is a paper that says that Putname, the Pleistocene box turtle, which is a larger version of the box turtles that we have, like the Eastern box mm-hmm. turtles, actually didn't go extinct, but that it like lives on its DNA is a part of box turtles that are alive today, right? So like, okay. just like Neanderthal went extinct, but like didn't actually because some humans have Neanderthal DNA. Yeah, 2% right? throughout Europe pretty much, yeah. Right. So this is, this is my little brain trying to make sense of this. So if I say anything that's kind of unfounded, like just... Just deal with it. I'm doing the best I can. But the idea yeah. with these is the same. With with box, with box turtles is the same that Putnami didn't actually go extinct, but that they still exist within certain animals. Now, as far as yeah, I know, makeup. yeah, but as far as I know, this, this locality here hasn't been studied and they're really big and they're really different. So I don't mind having fun with it and just calling them Pleistocene back box turtles because I can call them whatever I want because nobody's proven me proven otherwise yet. Nobody's done the genetic work, but it was pretty yeah, yeah. damn cool to, to see. You took a bunch of photos mm-hmm. of those. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I yeah, uploaded I them to show it. everybody, but they didn't come through. So, okay. Yeah. I'm looking at the folder right now. And it didn't <laughs> come through yet. This was all like last minute today. I was trying to get everything uploaded so I could show, but I mean, this is a radio show, so we don't always show photos, but yeah. Um, and, and I only have what I took. We haven't even, I mean, we've only been home for a few days, so we haven't had a chance to share all the photos back and forth and everything, too. What day did you get home? Um, Wednesday morning. 
Yeah, I mean, we landed Wednesday morning, but but that was after a red eye, and I didn't sleep on the plane, of course. So, I mean, really, I wasn't actually home until Thursday, and then I had to work, and I had work to catch up on. So, yeah, yeah. it's been more than a couple of days, but really. Yeah, I, I was just trying to call you out. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Uh, looking back on your trip, like in hindsight, is there anything you would have done differently as far as uh, planning or execution? Yeah. So the interesting thing about this challenge is that you, you're going through two, I mean, many, many, you're, you're seeing all the different like ecosystems of the U.S., right? We weren't seeing like the deciduous forests of the Northeast or whatever or, or, or what have you. But like for from a turtle lover's perspective, you're seeing most of what the U.S. has to offer in one drive across the country. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the trip was really broken up into two parts. We had kind of the middle of, you know, I guess like San Antonio-ish would be like the, the dividing point between the two. We went through all of these different states and areas where we were just crushing it with turtles all the way to about central Texas. And then when we got to West Texas and, and got into the desert, it was over. Uh, and the reason for that is we were, we were at a good time for stuff to start waking up everywhere, except in the desert, it's not time yet. You know, in West Texas, you want it to be June in Arizona, you want it to be like August when the rains come. So, and then it was just weird. We started striking out like, you know, we were in California and, and on the same day we were at the habitat for the Mojave desert tortoise and it was too cold. So we drive an hour and a half, two hours to the actinomy spot to look at Pacific pond turtles. And now it's too hot for them. And it's like, you've got to be kidding me, but we couldn't drive in reverse. We had to make it across the country. It, it is what it is. There's no stopping and saying, oh, we'll find them tomorrow when the weather's better. That's it. You take the chance when you go, mm -hmm. you know, and you schedule it in advance because you got plane tickets and everything else. So, um, so much of it is left to chance. Um, I don't even remember what your question was, but I think <laughs> my point, my point <laughs> well, is that this well, was really broken. anything differently. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, we talked about like, Really, if you were just trying to get your money's worth, you could spend the same amount of time and just go Jacksonville to Central Texas and then fly home, and you would have found you would have found more species. Because there were times that, like you know, we we met the folks in in Houston and we had traps in the water for alligator snappers. They had traps in the water for us, waiting for us to come, which was incredible. Uh -huh. But we got there and somebody set up the traps wrong. And there were no alligator snappers. So, you know, that was one like, okay, got to keep going. We're not going to find those. But if we had another day, we could have herped in that area and then tried again in the morning with the traps in a better spot. Um, so th things like that, I think, you know, you just too bad. We, we, we only found Mississippi mud turtles dead on the road, but there were tons of them there. I know there were, mm -hmm. but we didn't find one. And then it was just time to go. And that was it. So once you leave that one habitat that you know a species is at, you're making the decision to get across the country and to not find that species. So there were a lot of times where we had to kind of negotiate that um, and, and know that our number wasn't going to get ticked up another notch. And we still had a chance to get 30, but then we got, you know, totally, you know, Arizona mud turtle, Sonoran mud turtle, Sonoran desert tortoise, Mojave desert tortoise. Pacific pond turtle. We got, we got skunked on all those things late. Uh, otherwise we, we had a chance of getting 30 still. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. You said you did get to see some alligator snapping turtles, right? You saw the Suwannee one. Yeah. So that's a different species. So we yeah. actually, like we were hoping we'd see one and then we got yeah. lucky and we found this absolute beast, hundred year old female named Baba Yaga. Mm -hmm. Who's like a, um, who's, who's way overbite. Yeah, she's she's like a legend in that in that area. Mm -hmm. And um we were able to find her and then once that happened it was like, "Oh my gosh, we're still going to Houston. We have a chance to see both of these alligator snapping turtles, the two and see the differences and everything." So we were really psyched about that, but but um, when we got to Houston for the traps, they just had a, a pallid soft-shell turtle, a large female, which was cool cuz we got to handle that. Mm -hmm. But um yeah. Uh, I think that Steve just asked about the beep. I think it's my house. 
I keep hearing it too. That's what my keeps freaking Sorry, gang. Like microwave or something. It's the, it's the Apalachicola, the Sewanee, and there's one Ooh. other uh, alligator snapping turtle species, right? Am I crazy? I don't know if it's valid. No, is it just the two? Yeah, yeah just the two. Yeah, it yeah, was they didn't, three, they but didn't then validate the third one. Yeah. Okay. So the paper listed the three, right? And then they yeah. they didn't validate the second. The in review, one. yeah. In review, they accepted two of them, and then mm -hmm. I think they wanted more information on the third one. So, mm -hmm. like, I think there will be some more genetics and some other stuff run eventually. But you know. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, it was cool. And, I you know, we, so the other thing, too, is right <laughs> when we landed, we were talking to Jack Thompson and Wyatt Keel, who are like two of the amazing uh, young turtle minds in the world. And and they were so wonderful. They, they brought us out to the Santa Fe Turtle Project where they had traps in the water, but we got there a little late. So they already pulled the animals. And there's this whole big argument with Kevin Pollack about his rules about what actually counts as finding an animal. So those didn't count. So they had a chicken turtle. They had um, a Sewanee alligator snapper. They had a yellow belly slider still when we got there. But none of those counted for our numbers. So because we didn't pull them from the traps. Um, okay. We didn't That's set fair. the traps. We didn't, you know, it's like yeah. there's there's an experience piece that you need to have for, for these herpers. I'm like, I saw, I mean, I'm, you know. I'm just a turtle guy. Like I saw the turtle that should count, but no. And we weren't, we weren't visiting any private collections or anything like that. Like we were actually doing it like a herper, like, you know, for Kevin, this is his life list. That really means a lot to him. So he's not going to mark something down unless he actually found it. You know, this is like actual like herper stuff that like, I don't even really understand, but I got to really have a crash course in through, through this trip. So we saw a yellow belly, but it didn't count. And we didn't see another one. So we actually did see Cumberland sliders and then we didn't see a red ear all the way into Louisiana, but then we saw 94 of them or whatever the number was. Yeah. So I mean, um, with, re with red ears, I, we almost got I, all three. That wouldn't surprise but, me because they're that you don't really get into their native area until you get that far West. So it's probably a good thing. You didn't see one until you got there. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, I was expecting to see an invasive one yeah. first and we did see invasive ones right. in California swimming with sea turtles. Yeah. That's but, wild. Yeah. <laughs> And we did see that. I was excited about that. Yeah, is it an area of like a like a brackish water area where they're commingling there? Yeah, so um, it's an area I think I've talked about on the podcast before. And I, I purposely, when we when we did this trip, I knew that we were going to have a chance for less turtles, you know, west of Texas, and that was the case. Really, the only turtles we found west of Texas is is um, Gorzugai the Rio Grande Cooter, which was an awesome, I mean, by that point we were getting skunked in West Texas. By the time we got to New Mexico and found a Rio Grande Cooter, I was ready to lose it. I was so excited because that's a species. That's the first species I ever ordered online and got shipped to my house. <laughs> I love those turtles. I really do love those turtles and seeing the them in the wild. Years, oh saying. yes. They're yeah. so amazing. They have, they're cool. They have red on the Brit on the, on the marginals near the bridge and they're yeah. just up there basking and they just look so glorious. Um, but, but that turtle and then the sea turtles are the only turtles that we saw west of Texas. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and we weren't even seeing lizards. I mean, we, we got completely skunked. I mean, the good news is we got the spot at the end though, where we had those sea turtles. Um, it's a man-made little pond that, um, uh, not pond, but like, like, um, river type thing that that gets the concrete culverts like from oh, Termi yeah. terminator 2 um this <laughs> nasty runoff from everybody's yards and stuff brings this nasty toxic looking green sludge into the water mm -hmm. and all the juvenile sea turtles are there i mean we counted because we were up where we could see the whole thing we counted probably there were probably 25 sea turtles in there swimming with red ear sliders oh, it was my God. incredible How did you get uh, you know, the, I, this was the second time I was there. The, the first time I got, um, really close, probably within like 20 feet, 15 mm -hmm. feet. But this time they were just out a little bit so we could see them all from, from the nice vantage point, but we couldn't get as close this time, but they were, they were swimming real close. There was, there was tons of ducks, tons of sea turtles, tons of red ear sliders and tons of shopping carts. That's so so just picture that in your brain. Um, it's, it's like the type of thing, like after I go out herping, I might like have a, have a, a dream where like I I'm 
I discover like 10 albino spotted turtles and who knows what my brain tells me those look like when I'm dreaming, Mm -hmm. but I'm like freaking out, you know, this is that type of thing where you're like, why I'm here and and there's sliders, but why are there sea turtles? Like this doesn't make any sense. Like it's something you would dream and wouldn't be real. Crazy. (laughs) Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Yeah. Appreciate you. Uh, I have a different question for you now. Yeah. So you famously say that you come for the turtles, but you stay for the people. Yeah. All right. So with that in mind, and also with the fact that you've known John for a good 25 plus years now, probably close to it. Um, no, 20-ish, I would say, probably. Uh, so with that, what are your two favorite memories of this trip from one, your favorite memory of John and your favorite memory of Kevin, your interactions with them throughout the nine days oh, in a small car? That's a really good question. Um. John's bowel movements, clearly. It's <laughs> <laughs> a really good question. I, I tell you what, you 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 mentioning him counting his bowel movements reminds me <laughs> of the episode we did where you and he were just like stuffing your faces with Halloween ween candy while we were doing the show. Yes, but you're leaving out an important point. The, the, the gig was, the, the joke was, the gag was that every time you said something that made you sound like a nerd, we would eat a piece of candy. So we were stuffing our faces with candy, but for a reason, <laughs> we couldn't stop. <laughs> that was funny. That's that was funny. back at the beginning when I was when I was self conscious about what a what a nerd you sounded like all the time. It's your it's your superpower, and I mean that with the most the utmost love and respect. You are perfect. You are perfect. Um, yeah. So I would say for Kevin. So there was a, a spot where we were road cruising in Texas with Chris Drake, who was an absolute incredible host guide support person. Yeah, he's on right now. Yeah. 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 He was amazing. Oh my gosh. Um, and I was in the, in Chris's truck with him trailing behind the minivan with all of the hand painted drawings on the back in the mud and John's driving road cru- while we're road cruising on dirt roads. So there's just dust everywhere. I mean, everything I own is caked in, in dust and dirt. It is insane. I was like chewing on sand from road cruising for like three days. It just couldn't even get off of me and out of my mouth. Uh, and Kevin is sitting on the window outside of the car with his whole body outside of the car looking forward um, to, while we're road cruising and we're going, you know, 30 miles an hour in a dusty road with rocks flying everywhere and everything. And he's hanging out of the car. So that was probably the, um, the highlight for him. And then there was a moment for John when he's canoeing and he's never been on a canoe or kayak in his life. And he lives in Queens, New York. And he, um, he caught a, a hatchling turtle with his bare hand off the side of the canoe. So that was a really, a really cool one. Yeah. Yeah. Which species? Uh, So at that spot, we had Cumberland sliders and um, um, black knob sawbacks. So I I keep wanting to call them Nigranotas, but those are Delta Colas officially, right? They're not split anymore? Uh, They're not backwards. Yeah, they're not split. It's all Nigranota. All Nigranota. Okay, sorry. I was backwards. Yeah, all Nigranota. So, um, yeah, so the Nigranota were tough. So, uh, um, and there were also Alabama red bellies there too. Um, all babies. It was like this nursery that we were in. So he just dunks his hand in and, and picks up a Cumberland slider. But um, the, interestingly, because it was nighttime, the, um, the map turtles were totally alert and just being like map turtles. And the red bellies and the uh, sliders were just like bobbing up and down in the water like corks. Like they were just like sleeping, not knowing, you know, what they were doing or whatever. So we certainly, you know, took pictures and and grabbed the sliders anyway um, and didn't want to molest the uh, the red bellies too much because that's an ESA species. But it was cool to just see them in their element like that. It's like this is just insane that they're just sitting there. It was It was really cool. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I personally have one more question. I don't want to cut everybody else talking, but I only have one more question for you that I wrote down. Yeah. Uh, maybe some else will pop up. But this last question is for anybody else out there that's either listening now or in the future wants to do a trip like yours, 
what do you recommend they do planning wise? What route should they take the same route? Should they stop in West Texas? Like you said, things like that. I think that they should take the same route and they should try to beat our number. Hmm. Yeah. So, so I'll say, you know, when we were doing this, I couldn't help but reflect, especially because we found so many species early. We're like, this is a legendary run. Like we are really crushing it with a lot of stuff right now. Um, especially because of all the different map turtle species we saw. I mean, that was, that was a piece that I think, first of all, I was there thinking of Steve Enders the entire time and Chris Lekowitz, where I'm just like, these guys would just be in their glory right now. Um, it, it, the, we, we had a lot of time to reflect. We're on the road 24 seven. We're, we're, we're just going, there's nothing else to do, but just think about what we were doing and talk about it and everything. So I thought, you know, I really felt like we picked the right amount of time to make this unreasonably challenging. And I, I, this is the weirdest thing, right? On the plane ride down from New York city to Jacksonville, we, I happened to be sitting next to a guy who's from Connecticut, but lives in, in North Florida now. And he was just finishing up a cannonball run where he drove in 47 hours on a motorcycle from Jacksonville to San Diego. And he's talking to me about it. I, like, this is crazy. You literally just finished no, your cannonball run. Yeah. I don't know what to start. I swear, I have a picture of him for the book and everything. I swear to you. And for a motorcycle, motorcycle ride. Wow. So he said the guy who let, there were three of them. How crazy is this? <clears throat> for the guy that was like the leader of their group, he wore a diaper to make it across the country. So if your whole deal, <laughs> if your whole deal is to make it across the country on a motorcycle as fast as you can, you wear a diaper, you do it in under 50, 50 hours and you make it, ha you sleep four hours the whole time and you make it happen now. And that's what they did. If you're doing the cannonball run in a car, you, you install some large gas tanks and you fill your car with food and you drive across and you try to do it in 21 hours or whatever the hell people do. It's, it's crazy time. And you go 110 miles an hour the whole way, whatever it is. Right. Um, so with this, I think this was the absolute fastest we could have gone to make it across the country and to try to see everything. If you go any shorter, then you then you won't you won't be able to see stop everywhere. You would just have to go through. It was already a challenge. If you go any longer, that gives you a lot of time where you could kind of sit and wait in certain areas. So we felt for us to have this element of crazy rush. Um, juxtaposed next to the need to slow down and smell the roses. It was the perfect amount of time. So with that, and then with the success we were having, particularly early in the trip, we felt like it was an opportunity for us to, um, it felt like we, we felt like we were doing something really special that when this book comes out, people may be interested in trying to copy it one day. And that's when it started to get really exciting. That, you know, someone may copy and do their own spin on it or, you know, do the same route and kick our butts. And really the only rule was, you know, the eight days on the road or whatever. And um, trying to stay off of Route 10 as much as we could because that was just going to help us find stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank we you. We know you met up with, uh, with Chris, but did you meet up with any other people? Yeah, good question. So um, we met up with... Jack and Wyatt that I mentioned in that group from Santa Fe. The next person that we met up with was Ronnie. Ronnie Hare was a complete, um, was a huge part of this. He's a very experienced herper who knows how to find everything. Um, he also might not be human. Um, <laughs> he's aging in reverse and is like the six foot six version of Chuck Norris. He's this like standing, he's standing on a canoe with his shirt off. All he wore was jeans. We, <laughs> he's, he's in jeans on a canoe with no shirt. There's just Patrick Swayze in out there. Standing on a canoe <laughs> by himself, like a paddleboard, just like a, like an absolute gangster. So we finish up and, and we offered him to stay in our hotel and he did. And we gave him his own bed because he deserved it. He was helping make a lot of things possible for us. And he took a shower and he changed into another pair of jeans and slept in jeans with no shirt on. It was literally all he wore was his, 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 um, his uniform. So um, Ronnie was, and he became like the thing of legend because just seeing him in his element was like, this person isn't even human. He's not even human. 
uh, and and he put us on a lot of the species that we saw. A lot of what we saw, we were just observing, right? It's normal herping rules. If you can get a really positive ID and know exactly what it is, that's fine. We weren't trying to molest or touch all, all the turtles. We certainly enjoyed, you know, the opportunity to pick up a turtle that was crossing the road or take a picture with a turtle or whatever. But but there were a lot of species we were just observing. And that's what made the number, um, you know, when you're, when you're talking about basking species like cooters and uh, map turtles, that's, that's a lot more of a possibility because of, because of that. And uh, anyway, to, to keep on with your question, we met Chris Drake in Texas after that. We were on our own for a little while. That's where we, we went up to the Pearl River by ourselves. And that's where we saw the, um, the ring map turtles, which was incredible. We went down to Texas you, after that. Were you Go in ahead. Mississippi or Louisiana when you got the pearls? Um, or the rings, I mean. But I think it was – I, I, that was Louisiana. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's tough. The, the, the Mississippi and Louisiana right. and Alabama gets like – because we were yeah. going like all day and night at that time too. It was really, really <clears throat> tough to yeah. tell what – Yeah. Okay. Chris says Louisiana. He knows. Chris actually put us – because we didn't know exactly where Got it. Was. So um, we were this morning, we stayed with Chris and we met Eric Muncher who oversees the project with the uh, alligator snappers, which is crazy because they're like, you know, these these are the alligator snappers we can say that definitely humans because it's, it's in downtown Houston where they find dead bodies all the time. Like really, uh, and... You know, that was it's crazy. It's bizarre habitat so for turtles. This water. It was crazy. And I actually be there and be, I went in the water and tried to help them check the traps. Even though mm-hmm. I could barely stand up without wanting to fall over. So I wasn't really any, but anyway, that with Chris. And then I don't think I'm forgetting anybody. I mean, Chris was with us for a good amount of time. Ronnie was with us for a good amount of time. Although no overlap there. We were alone in between those two. Uh, then we were alone again, and we went up to, to New Mexico after getting skunked in West Texas. And we met up with Grayson Offerman for some turtles in Arizona. Now, Grayson Offerman is the son of Cord Offerman, and I realized that about 10 minutes into being with him. Um, Michael Skibstead hooked us up, and it was awesome. Like We were on the road, and I was asking Michael about the sites in California, <clears throat> and he was like, you know, you guys should – should be able to find something in Arizona. Let me connect you with Grace and see if he's available. And Grayson on like eight hours notice joined us in the field to come out with us um, just on a whim. And it was, it was awesome. And, and him and I were in frigid water trying to find, trying to find some mud turtles, but it didn't work out. And that was during the eclipse too. So the eclipse is happening right over us. And like we, we could barely even stop to take a picture of it because we're all turtles all the time. I mean, we went eight days straight. We're like had a fire under butts the entire time. Which, it was crazy. It was which mud turtle crazy. were you looking for? Uh, we were looking for the um, Sonoran mud turtle at that point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that was one we should have got cool. and we didn't. But again, weather was weird. Yeah. We were like, you know, we, we were told if there's water, you're going to find turtles. Like, they, you know, they're out yeah. when there's water. But the water was actually high. It was like raging. It looked like whitewater rapids. Yeah. And the water was so cold that um, mm-hmm. it just. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. When, when we found those out in Tucson, like. it, it That's it where was, we were. We were in Tucson. Tucson. Yeah. It was 114 degrees or whatever because it was, you know, early August. But. If you get in the pools where there is water, like it's yeah. amazing just how much cooler that water is down below the surface. It's wild how how vastly different the water and the air temperatures can be there. You should try it in April. That water was so cold. I I, I thought I was going <laughs> mean, to die. Can't be any colder than some of the water the the wood turtle streams. It's I've colder. Been in. <laughs> I said that's what I said to them. We've I done, said we've I've, done thirty. But I mean, I go into. I go in the water when we do wood turtles yeah. with shorts. Everyone else has wetsuits on and I go in shorts and I've never felt it as cold as that water in Arizona. Never. Yeah. But it was running. It was like raging, yeah. like mountain runoff of like melted yeah. snow that's coming down and yeah. then smashing yeah, it's me. Like just in, above in freezing basically. Yeah. 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 It was crazy. Did you get into any hairy situations in your quest to see turtles? Uh, well, we were at one spot that's like full of Mississippi map turtles and stink pots and we were getting, we were getting skunked basically. It was time to move on, but we knew they were there. So it's like, well, do we stay and risk 
missing other things to try to check off these boxes. There's the Mississippi map. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I love that photo. Can you zoom in on that at all, Steve, or no? It's a really cool photo. It looks like it looks like a cool background, like of like a um, computer background, like an elementary school photo, like with lasers. Except it's yeah. you know, like at that little foot sticking out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The solar panel out back. Yeah. So so we were at this location, and the water was gross. It was gross, and um, we Chris was freaking out because he was trying to show us these things. He's like, these things are always here. There's always map turtles. Look at this picture. And he shows us a picture and it's 40 basking turtles and 18 of them are map turtles. The others, of course, ready or sliders. And we're just hanging out and all we're seeing is ready or slider, ready or slider, ready or slider. Finally, we see a common snapper, butt it goes up on this like uh, little dam and we just see its butt we're like perfect new species. Didn't even count. Didn't even think we'd see one, but there it is. Common snapper. Um, then we saw a stink pot. And I wasn't taking any chances, so I jumped in. I jumped in the water and I grabbed the stink pot. Now, I'm tall. The water was like barely over my knees. It was perfect, you know, like you couldn't erode it any better. There we go. Stink pot, mark it down. Old male. It was terrific. But we're not finding a damn map turtle. And it's like, we need to go. We got to go. We need to get to, to where were we going? I think that night we had, oh, that night we had to make it to, to, to Comstock, to, to West Texas. Uh, so we had a lot of driving to do. We still had another spot to go see Kegel's maps and Texas cooters and stuff. So we had a whole bunch of stuff lined up to knock all these species off. But I really wanted to get, and there's the Kegel's map, which is just a beautiful turtle. Uh, but we really wanted to get the Mississippi map knocked off. And we hadn't seen one. Now, this was before we got that picture of the one on the log. That happened after. But Chris notices a little map turtle on a on a log just basking right near the near the bank. It's kind of like that, but on a smaller piece of wood. And I wasn't taking any chances. So just like I did for the stink pot, I jump in the water. Now the water, this disgusting water, it was so gross. It was like a cesspool. It was so gross. I can't explain to you how gross it was. I just jumped in, except I, so as I, as my massive body hits the water, it shifts a little bit and I misplaced where the turtle was and it was going to go right in the middle of my hand, but it hit just off the heel of my hand when I hit the water, because when I hit the water went like, Woo, you know? Uh, so I missed it and I'm up to my neck in disgusting cesspool. It was so gross. So everybody's laughing at me. Yeah. Chris says wallet, phone and all my phones in my pocket, my wallet's in my pocket. Oh my gosh. So I paid, I paid for everything the rest of the trip with water that was not only wet, but smelled disgusting. It was covered in black, you know, black pond scum. And uh, anyway, luckily it wasn't all for naught because even though I missed that turtle, we did see, uh, I think it was like seven Mississippi map turtles. And then we were able to grab some Tex-Mex and call it a day and move on to the Kegel's map <laughs> spot. So it worked out pretty well, but I mean, you know, that constant pressure to just make things happen and, and everything was, was insane. Mm -hmm. Did you have a competition to see who could spot the most species or were you all kind of in it together? There no, I, I think there was a, uh, I think you, you want to not be the jerk who finds nothing. So yeah. I think when, when John caught that, <clears throat> that baby turtle, it meant a lot to him. You know, when, when I got the snapper the first day, that meant a lot to me because honestly, when we were going down the, the, the spring, everybody was in boats and I was like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to like snorkel, you know, cause I had been to like Wakaiva and stuff like that places where I can stand. I'm, I'm, Six foot eight, I'm there a bit of seven feet. So I can actually stand in a lot of these places and if people go down, then I'm usually pretty good, right? Well, I'm not a great swimmer. So we're going down and I literally for hours was like fighting drowning. I, was, I kept making jokes that like, I had like a pink frothy dis discharge that I was coughing up and things. Like I really thought I might die in my sleep that night because I was trying, I was fighting drowning the whole time. So when I was able to catch that snapper and get that snapper in hand, actually Jack Thompson and I, Ronnie saw it and he said, there's, you know, there's a huge snapper and Jack Thompson and I went as fast as we could over to it. And we, we met at the snapper at the same time. And I didn't mean to, but I like booty bumped him out of the way, which is a, a big, cause Jack is a, Jack is a beast for anyone who hasn't met him in person. I mean, you see him on pictures. Jack's like six foot five and built like Rob Gronkowski, right? <laughs> huge hands, jacked, just a naturally big kid, a brick, you know, what house, right? So, but I mean, I'm a lot bigger than him anyway. I still have him by like a hundred pounds. So we happened to get there at the same time, but I like boot him, booty bumped him out of the way by accident. 
and I wasn't going to stop or slow down. I mean, there's so many things that I hesitate with like snakes and crocodilians, but an alligator snapper, I do know how to handle. So I just grabbed it. And then he was freaking out. Like, do you know what you just did? This is incredible. I've been here 60 times at least. And I've been looking for this turtle. She's like an icon and I've never found her. So that was awesome. So there were moments like that. Um, I don't think there was any type of competition of like, oh, I saw that. But but there was definitely that feeling of like, I don't want to be the one who finds nothing. And that day up until then, I found nothing. For me, that took all the pressure away for the rest of everything. So, um, so for John, catching that baby turtle, that baby <coughs> slider was a big one. Um, you know, Kevin saw uh, Chuckwalla, which was a species that was on our hit list. Yeah. You know, a non-turtle species that was on yeah. our hit list. So yeah. that was really That's cool. cool. Uh, California king snake he found was a big one for him too. So there were other non-turtle ones as well, but I think we just didn't want to be the person who went like three states without finding anything. Mm-hmm. That'd be that. That'd be you. It'd be me. <laughs> It'd be me because I'm usually just talking and not even looking. The the biggest one for me though, I, I think as cool as that snapper was, Ronnie spotted it. I grabbed it, but Ronnie spotted it. The biggest one for me was the four of us were going. We had two cars. Chris and I were in front. And then the car behind us was John and and Kevin. And Chris was talking in the middle of talking. But then I saw as we drove by a turtle right where the road met the the kind of shoulder area. And I had him stop the car. I jump out. Kevin was in the passenger in the minivan. He jumps out and he's running forward. And I just run right past him. He's like, what is it? What is it? I didn't even say anything. I just ran right past him. And it was a box turtle. It was a an, an ornate box turtle and the prettiest ornate box turtle I've ever seen. It was um, it had black leg scales. I'm sorry, red leg scales and a green head with blue cheeks and amazing wow. markings. It was absolutely incredible. Oh, great. Yeah, you have the picture. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah it, you it was, sent me that one. It was yeah, so I'm beautiful. just sharing what you texted, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was a turtle that that I saw and that meant a lot to me because I'm normally the one who's jabbering on and not finding stuff and that was one that I saw and that was a species we did not anticipate finding but hoped, you know, you hope when you go cross country you're going to bump into these things. Yeah. So that was yeah. that Your was a big awesome. one. That was a big one that really meant a lot to me and that, that I'll never forget for as long as I live. So when I'm thinking about this trip and, you know, the map turtles stand out, that, that big snapper stands out, the mm-hmm. the the Rio Grande Cooters stand out. Obviously, sea turtle swimming with red ears is crazy, but this turtle might general. might be number one. Yeah, yeah. That was that's, awesome. So that's Ornato. Uh, Ludiola is no longer recognized, right? I, I don't know what officially, honestly, there are like three or four different schools where like, you know, is, is, is a three toed Mexicana or mm-hmm. Carolina or like, I don't know what anything is with box turtles. Okay. I, yeah, box turtles are a mess taxonomically right now. Like there's not really a ton of agreement. Even if you look at the checklist, it's got or, or. Yes. That's what I was going to say. Even the those ors. folks aren't, aren't like taking a stand on either of them at this point. So, yeah, <clears throat> I don't know, but I, th- I wasn't sure. I, I, again, that's one of those things where like, where am I? Is this a desert box turtle? Like it had green on its head. Yeah. So I thought, is yeah. this a desert? Yeah. But I mean, it's still an ornate, whether it's a desert or an ornate because sure. they're both subspecies of the ornate, but right. um, yeah. Every I was time I've seen them ornate. when they've been green like that, they've been really small. Like this was small. SCL was like small three and a half inches. inches. He wasn't three and a half, but he was small. He was four, yeah. he was four, four and a half. Yeah, he was really okay. an, an older animals. male that was small, which was really crazy to see. He used to call those pocket boxies. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely was. It was awesome. I was sad to let him go, not because I wanted to poach turtles, but because I just wanted to spend more time with him. But we needed to hurry up because that was on the way to the Cago <clears throat> spot. So you can see, I mean, we were crushing right. it in all these states. And then Texas with Chris, I mean, we we knocked off on that day something like six or seven new species because we got stink pots, common snappers, right. um, you know, the ornate, the kegels, the Texas cooter, Mississippi map. Like there was a lot of stuff that we knocked off for the first time on that day. We got pallid soft shells that day too, but we are, had already had them the day before. So anyway, just lots of stuff that we saw in a very short amount of time. It was crazy. Sounds like the best trip, buddy. I'm so proud that you were able to do this. Yeah, it was it was awesome, and um, I I 
I kept thinking during it, I can't believe we're actually doing this. We kept talking about it. Like, wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be cool? And then we actually did it, which is just stupid. And um, even afterwards, like, I can't believe we just did that. And, you know, not even talking about the fact that just seeing the country, you know, yeah. seeing all the oil derricks and, and burn off that they do at these, at these um, plants in, in Texas with like these burning smokestacks, like, you know, Louisiana, I never seen because of the roads we were taking, we went through crawfish form country and these, these weird boats that they use that look like a tractor with a boat attached to it that are going through and, and checking all the traps for um, crayfish. And then we actually, or as they call them crawfish, we actually saw someone on a, on a quad who was checking craw crawfish traps and got to go out and he's like, yeah, I caught a gate or two. I'm going to go and shoot it. I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's, that's fun. So <laughs> Just being able to see the back roads of America all the way through the country was was also a crazy piece. So yeah, yeah. What type of camera were you taking these pictures on? We just, we had that in the comments. I missed it by accident. Uh, so we had a bunch of different cameras. So we had like a Nikon with a zoom. Um, I can't remember what Chris had, although none of these photos were Chris's. But Chris had a a little zoom too. It might have been a Canon. I can't remember. Um. And then I, we were doing cell phones through a scope as well. So Kevin bought a Kevin Pollock bought a scope before we went, and we could set it up to see the turtles, and then put the camera up to it and take photos. So that's that's how we got good good photos of a lot of the map turtles. You could see them with your eye way better than the photo shows, mm -hmm. but you know we were just doing the best we could to get some of the identifying photos. And there were times yeah. that we could see them better with our eyes, yeah. But that doesn't mean you can get a photo with with the um, with the camera, like the sea turtles are a good example of that. Like we could see them really well, mm -hmm. but they weren't close enough to get a good photo with your cell phone alone. And the scope wouldn't work because they're constant motion. They don't stop moving. Yeah. So yeah, just challenges. We were, we were just trying to see what we could make sure we got really positive IDs on everything that we counted. And, and that's about it. It was crazy though. Are you and, planning uh, your next trip now? Um, no. No, we did say we did talk about like going to other spots or, you know, what about Texas to the Northeast? You know, like that's the same amount of driving and you're actually doing better for for turtle stuff. So that might be like the great American turtle chase, too. Mm -hmm. uh, but but yeah, I thought, you know, I, I wanted to to tell a story of like Americana and the back roads of the U.S., through the eyes of a turtle person. Mm -hmm. And so I think we did that. It's, it's proving tough to write because of I'm, I'm already writing it. I was already writing it while we were out there, like trying to write while they were driving. It's messy because it's, it was just so much detail and so little time that you couldn't really sit there and, and think about what the feelings were. It was like onto the next thing. And it kind of writes that way. It's like, yeah. And then we did this and then two paragraphs later, and then we saw this species and two paragraphs later, and then we saw this crossing the road. And then and like, how good can a book be if every couple paragraphs it's, and then, and then, and then. So I'm, I'm working on that and just trying to get yeah. all the notes down. And then I'm going to try to make it sound a little sexier as time goes on. Cause right now it just, I, it sounds like a list in work. Right. I, I suspect over time you'll absorb some of those emotions. It's just like, you know, after somebody, you know, wins the world series or whatever, like they're kind of, like yeah. they, they haven't really reconciled all that. The other thing that I wonder is like it's natural to like think I need to write this chronologically, right? Yes. But I know. maybe you don't write it that way. That was a big chat. I'm writing it that way it. right now, but yeah, I know. Right. But maybe the final version it ends up arranged differently because it gets away from that and then kind of yes. vibe, which a chronological journey like that can kind of take on. So definitely yeah. I can see how the, the challenges that are there from it for sure, my friend. Yeah, makes total sense. <clears throat> That's what I've been struggling with a lot. Mm -hmm. but we'll see how it goes. I mean, it can't do any worse than the Turtly Devoted book. So, mm -hmm. Is that not it's doing well? In the chat. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. The people who are reading it really like it, though. So that's good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you got it. Oh, this is this is a good time to wrap it up, I think, unless anyone has any questions. But uh, we also wanted to just talk about the fact that this is this is going to be Kevin Minto's last show with us. Um, Kevin has.
decided to uh, hang up his his I don't know what to virtual call it. cape turtle room t-shirt I was going to say his willingness to be given a hard time by me is that <laughs> something That's... you hang up no because I'll still take that in person just not on air anymore you know perfect I'm, I'm much yeah. nicer to you in person than on the podcast. you're like the sweetest guy ever in person it's ridiculous yeah. I will say I will say though th this is the first time that we've had somebody on the podcast as a host who is actually making the decision where we can actually say on an episode thank mm -hmm. you so thank you yeah. for everything Amen. you are one of the most thank you guys incredible people that I know and one of my best <clears throat> friends in the world and I cannot <laughs> thank you enough for everything that you've done to make this incredible for learning over the years to not only take my crap but give it back to me which has been incredible and wonderful and i hope you know that all of that and i hope everyone else who ever, has ever seen that knows that all of that was just for the show because it makes for fun viewing i think i'm probably wrong uh, i love you buddy but thank you i want you guys i want everyone to know how much i appreciate yeah. and love you and how what a special person you are yeah, Thank you and so much. and as I, as I mentioned in the chat, I, I I do hope that you know things are are to a place where this isn't a permanent, you know. But I understand that for now, it's definitely what's needed for you and your family and stuff. And we appreciate you. you big time, man. So thank you, I really appreciate it. Um, you know, if I can say anything, the past pretty much eight years right now, this has been a very impactful important time in my life uh once a month i get to come on here and talk with you guys and the guests change out and emily you've been here for the past year and that's been amazing and i i truly can't think of a person better than you emily to completely fill in like the role that i played as far as like asking questions and whatnot because i think especially over this past year where it's declined for me and my capabilities uh you have been amazing and i can't can't say that this organization, the Turtle Room, is in will be in any better spot than it will ever be with having you on air. So thank you for coming on and being amazing, and thank you both for the opportunity to be along with you guys. Um, while I'm not going to be doing this, uh, I'm still more than happy to help in the back end stuff from time to time, um, and I look forward to just continuing my relationship with you guys outside of here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. And for everybody that's watched me for eight years, I'm sorry for all the mumbling. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> Don't hopefully, apologize for uh, what I've done. Too much, too much seltzer <laughs> in your face or the times that I've eaten on air and I've been made fun of for that. Uh, <laughs> it, it's been a journey. And thank you, truly. Uh, I can't wait to see the guests on air in the future. Yeah. I love you, Kev. I really do. Thank Kevin, you so you're much. Love you guys. I'm, I'm yeah. really grateful Amen. that that this worked out the way it did, that we had a chance to do this. Like I said, there, there's been people who have come on. You know, we never got to have this with Chris or John or mm -hmm. Amanda Sargent, now Amanda Mezzatesta. So, Mezzatesta. Yeah. So I think, you know, I'm really grateful that we had the opportunity just to have this this part of the chat and just to say thank you because you deserve it. And you've been amazing and, and a wonderful friend. I still have your ladder, by the way. I have to give that back. That's all right. I'll, I'll come by this week probably because I got to get the camera and stuff too. Yes. Yes. Please do that. That sounds yeah. great. Show me how to get the photos off of the. You got it. We tried to get footage of a. Yeah. So Kevin, let me borrow his um, his GoPro. So we tried to get footage of a manatee. You know, there were also other cool animals that we saw: bald eagle, manatee, stuff like that. But no rattlesnakes. <sighs> I know. I've never seen a rattlesnake in the wild, and we have them in Connecticut. How lame is that? Mm -hmm. I haven't anyway. seen them either. Yeah, I mean, I could. I just need to prioritize it. Now I'm like, oh, I have a, I have a list. I have things. I've actually seen things in the wild, so now I want to add to my list. So maybe I am becoming a, a real herper now. I don't know. Yeah, it's infectious. It is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my list is basically wood turtle, like 200 times. And, oh, that's <laughs> Right? Uh, Steve, I can't believe you're not trying to categorize every single map species yourself. Uh, you one of these days, I just uh, the best times to go out are during the are actually like right now, and my day job does not really allow for me to just go take a week and go uh, traverse the southeast to find all the map turtles. So, yeah, I will say, you know, something we've talked, and then I'll just leave with this thought because I, I said in the, before the lead-in that I, w I wanted to say this and then never did. 
Steve and, and Chris Lekowitz, and there, there are map turtle lovers that I've had a lot of conversations with about how the, you know, these narrow head species live with these broad head species in the same river system. And they don't generally hybridize because they don't need to. They just, you know, stick with their own kind or whatever. Sometimes if they're desperate and in captive situations where there's only a few of each, they, things happen. I didn't really realize exactly what that meant. And I also didn't realize, so like Steve is so by the book. So he'll have an enclosure that has pearl river map turtles with ring map turtles. And that's like what the enclosure is called, right, Steve? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. And I was like at the Pearl River looking for Pearl River map turtles and ring map turtles that live there together. And anytime you see a map turtle on a log, you got to really look because it could be either one. Obviously, you can tell if it's an adult female pretty quickly with the size of the heads on some of these females. It's insane. The barber's heads were like the size of a human head. It was insane. Um, but anyway, I, like that didn't really click for me until we were at the Pascagoula River and we saw yellow blotched with Gibbon's eye right? Pascagoula map turtles. And they're right there on the log together. And like, this is insane. Like we just got two species at one time. This is crazy. And actually, I think we got more than that because they, I think there were cooters with them also. Well, we already had the Eastern River cooter though. So anyway, that was, that was a takeaway for me as someone like I knew it, but to actually see it in person uh, in the wild, in the actual place where they occur was like, okay, I get it now. I really get it. And I see what that looks like. And I see what the habitat looks like. And, you know, the Pascagoula River was really cool because that's like the last unaltered river in America. So anyway, there was a lot of stuff like that that was just really cool to see. Um, and I, Steve, thanks for always teaching me about map turtles. And it, I just, it was awesome to actually see it and to finally understand a lot of it. So watch out. You've got a new map turtle fan <laughs> in your friend group that just is going to be asking you questions and wanting to talk to you about map turtles. So, and, and having a better appreciation for what you're doing with trying to breed them too, because so few people actually take care of map turtles the way they should. And, you know, are trying to breed a lot of the different species and stuff like that. So anyway, kudos to you. It was awesome. And uh, I'm a fan of map turtles. I'll leave you guys with that. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Thanks guys. Kev, I love you, man. <laughs>